So let's talk about users and permissions in SQL. Now, from my S uh, SMS manager, SQL Server Management Studio, I want to show you something here real quick. And it's under the properties of our server where we set our authentication. So here is our server authentication. And we can use Windows Authentication Mode or SQL Server, and this is sometimes referred to as Mixed Mode. So what this does is this defines where our security accounts are going to come from. Are they going to come from Windows or are they going to come from SQL and Windows? You can't eliminate Windows authentication. By leaving it in Windows authentication mode, it means our usernames and passwords are stored in Windows, be it Active Directory for a member server or uh, local users and groups if we're not. And we don't have any SQL specific accounts which exist in SQL only. If we need SQL specific accounts that exist in SQL only, we'll use mixed mode. Now this is not preferred because what happens then is a user uh, who's weren't working on a Windows computer will need to connect to Windows, log into Windows, then connect to SQL and log in using a separate username and password. By using Windows authentication mode, we can bypass that and SQL will use their Windows authentication. So we've got it in Windows authentication mode. Now what that means is my users need to exist inside Windows. Now this thing's sitting on a domain controller. So let me open up Active Directory Users and Computers. And I created a little OU here just to illustrate things. And I created a couple of users. And then I created an SQL group. And this is just a users group that I've added these two users into. Now the reason I did that is because you can, in SQL, we will need to create a login for these users, and we can do this in one of two ways. I can create an individual login for each user, or I can create a login for a group in Active Directory or local users and computers, or local users. Uh, but if I create the group, then anyone I add to that group will then have access to that SQL login. Now, that makes it much, much easier to manage this because then when I add users in AD, I just add them to this group and now they have access to SQL. And then I can do my permissions based on that group as well. Let me show you what we're talking about here. So I've got my users and my group created. I'm going to come back to my, oops, let me close all of those out. Let me come back to my SSMS and I'm going to go to security. Under security I'm going to go to logins and here are all of my existing logins. And I'm going to create a new login. So it's right click new login. Now because I'm doing Windows authentication you see I can set up for Windows authentication or SQL authentication and here's where I would set my password and password policies and stuff like that. If I leave it as Windows authentication then I can take advantage of the Active Directory password policies which actually is a little bit easier. So I'm going to do a search for SQL users. Now this is actually going to fail the first time and the reason is because it's looking in users or built-in security principles. So I'm going to change my object type and include groups in that and hit OK and now when I do a search for SQL users I find it. So this will enable anyone who's part of that SQL users group to log in. Now I can also define a default database in here, so I'm going to set their default database to AdventureWorks 2019. I can set a default language. I can set server roles, so I can make them part public access or any one of these predefined security roles. I can set up user mapping, which will give them additional things in different databases. So AdventureWorks 2019, notice their DB owner, it's because I mapped them. Uh, to that database and they're part of public. Now, I probably wouldn't want them to be DB owner, but there are some other ways we can worry or work with that later. As I go down through my others, you're going to see that they are just a member of public. Now, if I don't want them to be DB owner, let me go back to general and take away that default database and I can, let me just move it to something else, master or something like that. And then when I go to my user mapping, let me actually do it this way. Let me do it the right way just to be different, shall we? Set that back to AdventureWorks 2019. 
go to my user mapping, select the AdventureWorks database, and then I can uncheck DB Owner. There we go. That's the way I want that to go. Okay, and then I can look at securables and status. Now, there's another way that I can manage some of these securables, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. And then, do we give them permission to connect to the database engine? Do we give them permission to log in? Okay, so this creates my login. I hit OK, and this now shows up as SQL users. <clears throat> so I now have this login, and I can come back and go to properties anytime I need to. Just right-click properties, and then I can adjust you know, their securables and what they have access to. And now you're going to see all of these for the server here are a bunch of their permission or a bunch of their permissions and i've got three options here grant with grant and deny i notice right now i've got them the ability to connect to sql so let's talk about these different permissions grant gives them permission to connect to the server and right now it's just to the server itself i could add in additional things that i want to secure later on with grant means I grant them permission and then I <coughs> excuse me I also give them permission to grant that to somebody else and the deny takes it away so this gives permission this denies permissions this gives them permissions and then gives them the ability to share that permission now something else I want to show you here let's take a look at our database so I'm going to open up the AdventureWorks 2019 database, and I want to look at tables. And you can see all of these tables have kind of like a heading. So human resources dot department employee employee department history employee pay history job candidates. Okay, all these are part of human resources. Now this is what we call a schema. Now this is going to be an oversimplification, and it's not very precise. But for the purposes of this conversation dealing with securing things. I want you to think about it this way. The schema is like the folder and these are like the files. So just like with NTFS, if I uh, give permissions to the folder, they uh, typically get permissions to the files underneath. Can override that obviously, but typically that's what will happen. In the same way, if I give permissions to the schema, it'll normally give permissions to the tables. Now, the reason we need to understand that is because when we look at some of our security options, we'll uh, talk about assigning permissions to the schema, and that's what it's talking about. So, if I go into my security, go back to my logins, go to my SQL users, and I'm looking at securables, I can look for different types of, let's do all objects of all types. And this will find different types of things for me, including security, availability, groups, securities. All of these are things that can be secured, logins and endpoints. These are defined as securables. And when I set these, I give permission, I can give permission here to the securables. Okay. At the same time, if I right click on AdventureWorks database, and actually what I wanted was to go to one of my tables. So let's start out with AdventureWorks database, go to properties, and look at permissions. So here I can set permissions to my AdventureWorks database. And you'll see we have SQL users, and here are all of our uh, permissions. Alter, blah, blah. Grant with grant deny, we already talked about that. And with this will let me go back to my server permissions and view those specifically on my server, not just on my database. So now I can set permissions to this particular database. In addition to that, I can open up specific tables and let me go to my human resources department and go to properties and permissions. And now I can set permissions to this particular table department. So I can search a user role. I want to search for, whoops, search for SQL users. Yep, that's who I want. OK, and now I can set permissions on the table to alter, control, delete, insert, grant, with grant, or deny. Now this lets me do it on the table. Remember we talked about the schema 
right here, I can go to view schema permissions and I can set the same types of permissions for the entire schema. So search for SQL users, check names. Yep, SQL users is what I want. Make sure we got the right thing. And now I can set permissions for the entire schema. Okay, so by going through all of these, I can set I create the login, so I create the login in Windows first, if I'm using Windows authentication. Then I create the login in SQL. Then I can set permissions at the server level, the database level, the schema level, or the table level. And they all have the same basic thing, grant, with grant, or deny. So using that, I can get fairly detailed permissions. Now, the other thing is by doing this with groups, I create the ability to do role-based security. So I can create a, I just did a general group for SQL users, right? I could do a group for HR or a group for sales or a group for whatever. And then I can put my users into that group create a login for that group, and then in SQL, give fairly uh, very fine-grained permissions for exactly what I want those particular groups to be able to access inside my database. So that gives you a real quick overview of how we can set and manage user security in SQL Server.